Say, then play. Say, then play. I'm going to share with you in this video a bit of practice that I'm doing using that practice strategy, say, then play. And it's something that I use with my students, both adults and children, quite a lot, actually. And I've been really struggling with a little bit for the in, in a piece for the last few days. And then I've employed this strategy and all of a sudden things are better. So the piece I'm going to play is, well, I'm not going to play it, I'm just going to practice it, is um, Bartok's From a Diary of a Fly, which is from Microcosmos. It's number 142. If you're following us over on TikTok, and I would suggest you do, um, then you'll see there's a video gone out today following me on my travels this last weekend down to the Oxford Piano Group. And you can hear me falling off this particular piece because um, I, I don't know it well enough yet, to be honest. So, sitting down today, play, say, then play. What that means is I have to say the note names and the finger numbers before I play it, okay? So like this, I'm going to do just the right hand. Now, this is the bit where the, the fly gets stuck into a cobweb and Bartok says, ouch, cobweb. Um, so it is quite clashy and it's full of these tone clusters and the fingering is really awkward and like a lot of Bartok, um, I keep having to contract my hands. So E, G sharp, A, and I'm going to use fingers one, four and five, and then I have finger two, which plays on the F. So here we go. So that's your first, that's my first chord. I've said it, now I'm playing it. Now, I'm going to make things a bit tricky for myself. I'm going to keep playing that, but I'm actually going to say the notes and the finger numbers of the next chord whilst keeping that going. This is quite hard. So I'm noticing immediately that my thumb stays on an E. Hooray! And then my third finger drops down to a G. And actually my fourth finger stays still, but this has become an A flat rather than the G sharp. My second finger is also on an F, so let's see if I can do that. I did it. I had to stop talking for a moment, but I managed it. So there's that one. That one is definitely an awkward configuration for my hand. I'm going to keep that going and now I'm going to go on to the next one. Sorry about the fire engine sound <laughs> coming from here. So I'm going to keep my thumb on E. Then I'm going to move to an F sharp with my third finger. And my fourth finger is also going to drop down to a G. But the F still key continues as does the E. Let's see if I can do that. This one's harder. I've done it. Whee. Go Sally. So those are my chord changes. And the same with the left hand. I won't put you through that. But um, saying and playing, then playing, it, it does engage that first stage of learning. Because I find I do this, my students do this, I'm pretty sure you will do this as well. We try to leap over we try to leap over that cognitive stage so we can get straight into the playing which is the next stage with the, the associative where you start to put together the different elements or even to the third stage where you think everything is automated now clearly it's not automated it's a long long way from being there yet having done that i might then be a little bit more creative with my practice because the more I can be creative, the more patterns I start to see. So let's let's assume that I have done my left hand practice, which I did do earlier. And I discover that actually all the way through my this passage, my right hand's going E and F like that. And my left hand is similarly going E flat to D. They're always there. They don't always keep playing, but they're always there. So it could go something like this. This is where the, cap, the rhythm now comes in. Rhythm work is yet another problem here with coordination. Two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. Okay, like that. 
you can I know this is this is quite a piece this is um so I won't talk to you with any more of it it's a very very fun fast exciting piece that Bartok really captures that buzzing of the fly so practice strategy is say then play Ask your students to say the names of the notes, to say the finger numbers, and then they can play it because actually what's going on is clarity up here. There's no point in practicing things with your fingers if this doesn't know what it's doing. Many thanks for watching. I can see a few of you have joined me. Thanks for watching. Have a good teaching afternoon. I know I'm going to. Bye for now.